Well, good morning, everyone. Gavin McGay from Planning Plus Software, Auto Body Shop Consultants. And today I've got a special guest all the way from America, and it's Mr. Greg Lobsiger from Lawrence Body Shop. Welcome, Greg. Yep, thank you. Thanks for having me on. No problem at all. So, Greg, it was interesting. I came across you through Dave Lewis Elite Body Shop site, and... You did. You were generous enough to do um, a twenty-part series on profitability that you shared on his Facebook community page, and I was reading all of them and going through them. And, and um, uh, each time I opened up one of the new articles, so it was, just blew me away that the information that you were putting in to that series, and you were doing it out of the generosity of of just yourself in being able to share it with other community members. And I suppose from my perspective, that opens up the, the first part of this conversation is, uh, I, was, I was always taught by a mentor of mine. He said to me, he said, Gav, none of us are as good as all of us. Yeah, and, exactly. and I take that with me everywhere I go. So everywhere, every time we get an opportunity to share some information and to, um, to just help and encourage people. And one of the big things that I've, I've put a focus on driving, and that was one of the reasons why, why I penned my book, Know Your Numbers, It's the Heartbeat of Your Business, is yeah. that I wanted to get some depth back into the word profit. I wanted business owners and business people and even managers and technicians or anyone that picked up that book to start thinking of the beauty in the word profit and to stop seeing it as it's not possible that we, we get what we get and that's the limitation of it. And your series that you wrote really just opened up the fact that there is profit and you have to work for it and you have to get educated on it. So from your perspective, could you just share a little bit of background on, on how you came into Lawrence Body Shop and your journey on your road to understanding the meaning of profit? Well, to try to keep this uh, fairly short here, um, I, I'm a third generation shop owner. My grandpa started the shop back in uh, 1951. Uh, then my uncles took over in 76. I started full time after high school in 85. So I'm an old guy. And uh, I was a, uh, uh, what we call a combo tech. I did the body work or panel beater, I think you guys call them. And then uh, did the painting and all that from 85 to 2000. Then uh, my uncle started retiring. Um, I worked uh, as the owner then from uh, 2000 up to about 2008. I struggled and uh, I made money, but I didn't. Uh, uh, I didn't have a life. You know, I was just working, uh, working like a fool. And uh, I was the only uh, a tech in, in our shop. And uh, uh, had some okay people, but uh, you know, if you didn't get off the frame rack, it didn't get in the paint booth. And uh, if you didn't get in the paint booth, it's not going to get out and, and uh, make any money. So. Uh, long story, but long story short is that I was actually approached by a consulting outfit back in 2008, and uh, the timing was just right, you know, uh, just actually cold called <laughs> by a telephone call, and that was kind of the beginning, and uh, that that uh, that company now has kind of changed, and it's a totally different company, but anyhow, at the time, I, I learned how to uh, read my numbers and understand my profit loss. I, I suppose you guys call it a profit loss in Australia, is that right? Yes, yep. that's so, correct. Yep. Yep. And so I, uh, I learned how to read my profit loss and, and get it set, getting it set up correctly. You know, the, your profit and loss will actually talk to you if you, if you know how to listen and uh, it, it'll, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do, uh, but you have to understand the numbers and know the numbers. Anyhow, I, I threw a series of, a series of different other uh, coaches and so forth, uh, I learned about lean, lean manufacturing, different things like that, how you can apply that into a collision repair shop. But uh, uh, there is, I could talk for hours, but there is smoking good money in collision repair. Uh, you just have to know what rocks to look under. And that, that's what's, what's kind of kind of crucial uh, in having a, the knowledge because the, the insurance companies, um, you know, they got some very smart numbers people. They got uh, statisticians, you know, that have... Uh, uh, doctorates and they've got psychologists, you know, on how to deal with us and, and healthcare providers and everything else. Um, you know, and they, they, they know their numbers very well. And, 
not that they're out to get us, but you know, they're, they're trying to control their costs. So I understand it, you know, we do have something in common there, I guess. Um, but you know, they're, they're trying to make a profit. Okay. Well, we're trying to make a profit too. too. Um, but, uh, it, it, working in a body shop, um, isn't about trading dollars, you know, and as, as the saying goes that I've been, uh, I was told, you know, I don't mind going home tired or I don't mind going home hungry, but I'm not going to go home tired and hungry. And, uh, so it, it took me, uh, uh, it took me quite a while. I mean, back to, uh, uh swallowing my pride. Uh, and I'm sure uh, folks that work with you, Gavin, uh, it, it, pride is a, uh, is a barrier. It's, it's in, in, until I swallowed my pride, because I thought that my family knew more about collision repair than anybody else. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, and as much as I loved my grandpa and I have one uncle that's still left, uh, and, and still love him dearly. And he, he comes over to our shop almost every day and he's 87. And, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's his place to come to, you know, and, and, uh, if you, if you, if you drain any blood out of me, it's going to be body shop blood. That's what's going to be inside of me. I ran around there when I was five years old, but anyhow, uh, uh, but it took me, I probably lost 15 years at least, uh, by not swallowing your pride. Um, and you know, we just, the way that I understood to make money in, in the body shop is you just work harder. You just work more hours and, uh, hard work. This is, this is a, I was, I was taught this quote and, and, and please remember this hard work is not sustainable. You can't continue to just kill yourself. You can't do that. And uh, I'm at the place now, and I and I think I, uh, Gavin, I had mentioned this to you off offline here, but I'm at the place now that uh, you know financially we're 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 in very good shape, and uh, I'm debt free. Uh, we built a new shop back in uh, 2015, but you know it, it wasn't there. There was a lot of overtime hours just to um, get the knowledge, you know, to understand what it what it takes. Uh, uh, and back to uh, knowing your numbers, you, you can just think you're doing well. And uh, well, you know, I've, I've, I've got, so, and, and there's so many, there's, this is the sad part. There's so many body shop owners that run their business off their bank accounts. And you cannot do that. You can't do that. Hey, there's enough money in checking. I can do this and do that. And, and it's like steering a ship um, with no compass. You, you have no idea what direction you're going. And uh we, we, we've got to have a compass. We have to have a goal. We got to have, I, we're, we're down to daily goals. We got to produce this, this, you know, tomorrow we've got to produce this next day. We've got to produce this. And, uh, this isn't monthly goals or this isn't yearly goals or quarter goals or whatever. It's daily goals. And, uh, you, you have to wrap your head around that. I could talk for hours, Gavin, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you go on. <laughs> well, thank Well, thank you for that introduction to there. And, and, I'm glad you mentioned that because daily goals are, are really important because let's, let's use an example. Let's say that I have to sell or produce 50 hours in my body shop today and today I've produced 35. Mm -hmm. Well, tomorrow I've got to produce 65 hours to get yep. back on track. Yep. Now, if I continue to lose that 15 hours each day and then I get to Friday and start to work out what went on, I'm not a hope in hell of, of coming out of the end of the week with a with any prof, any form of profit. No. So the daily numbers are critical. And if you get your focus on, well, how many hours have I got set up for my shop today? And what can we do to make sure that we can produce that? How can I assist the technicians and everyone in my business so that we can all work towards that daily goal? So as an example of that, Greg, what would be your daily um, numbers that you look at? What are you aiming for? Well, I, I use both hours and dollars. Uh, we ran with dollars for, for quite a while, dollars per day. Um, and I could, I could talk for hours about our, our bonus program that we have with our, our guys. Um, it's, it was, uh, we, our guys, I don't, do they have flat rate in Australia or not? Or commission, do they have that or not? Well, we have both. What we call our, our flat rate is what we call an hourly rate technician. So he's okay. paid a, a gross wage per hour for, and he attends work for eight hours a day, and that includes okay. his taxable taxable income. And then we okay. have commission based uh, workers as well. We call them contractors here in Australia. So a contractor yep. might get a percentage of the labour value of the job mm -hmm. that he negotiates with the business owner. Okay. So, so we, uh, we used to do, we, we used to do contractors, I guess is what I, how I would, 
uh, uh, back to relate to what you're saying. Uh, we used to do contractors, and then we went to walk and uh, back to the the hourly guys, and uh, we went to a, a global system for everybody in our shop is 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 just hourly. Um, I'm not saying you you can't do well in a, in a contractor shop, but my my issue is. Um, you know, everybody working together as a team and, uh, uh, you know, back to efficiency and, and all that. But what really turned, I could give, make a big, long story. I won't go into it, but uh, we did a bonus system. First time I ever did a bonus system back in the end of 2018, actually to, to pay a nice Christmas bonus is what it was for. We weren't up to where we needed to be. And I just laid it out to the guys and I said, Hey, I want to, I want to pay a nice Christmas bonus. And so we need to be here by December 15th. So I could give it to them before Christmas, of course. And uh, of course, one of the millennial technicians says, well, you're not talking about a Christmas bonus. You're talking about a production bonus. I said, well, you can call it whatever you want. But I said, it's, it's, uh, 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 this is what we got to do in order to make uh, everybody get a bonus. So long story short, by the end of October, we, we met our goal. By the end of November, we met our goal. By the December 15th, by the first week of December, everybody even come in on a Saturday just so we could get make sure we made our goal by December 15th and by golly, we made it. Well, now the wheels were turning, you know, now I, I, all through the holidays, I'm thinking about this and I crunch numbers and, you know, cars per day, hours per day and all these things. And, and uh, so I come back in on uh, January 2nd of 2019 and I laid it out to him and I said, okay, guys, I said, uh, how many of you in, in here want to want to make an extra $10,000 this year? And uh, so I, I showed them what the math was. And of course, all the hands went up. Every hand went up. I want to make an extra $10,000 this year. And uh, so we, we, uh, I laid it out the, you know, hey, by the end of January, uh, you know, January has like, uh, like this January had 21 working days. February had 20. Uh, March had, everybody's bragging about how much money they made in, in March. Well, well, March has 23 working days. So you're past your break even. <laughs> yeah. And you got, you got two more days in the month than, than the average month. And boy, wow, you know, I did really well that month. We had a record month. Well, you, you better have. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, uh, I, I really found a, a synergy. You know, you take two, two workhorses and you put them on uh, pulling a, a sled, one by himself pulling a sled and the other one by himself pulling a sled. You can put those two workhorses together and they can almost triple what they can do when they're working together as a team. And I could talk about it for hours, but it's so exciting. Uh, we're, we're in a, we're in a, in the last six weeks, we're in a, a position with my guys that we're, we're doing stuff we've never done, never done. And it's working together as a team and, and having the culture. And I know people talk about culture, 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 and all that. But when you, you get everybody on board and, and they, they must know what the score is every day. And we actually, we meet twice a day. We did meet three times a day. And now we're down to two times a day. We meet at, uh, uh, we meet first thing in the morning and then we meet right after lunch, like military. I mean, military, if you're not going to be there, you better, I, we better have a text. My manager, you better have a text and saying why you're not there because we are here to work together as a team. Uh, it is, it is so much fun. And, um, it, so we back to our bonus thing. We're on a, we're working on a third tier bonus right now. And we've already, the first tier where I buried into their pay, you know, we moved way beyond and this sounds like a lie, Gavin, but. Now we added two guys in 2019, so so bear with me on that. But um, we're year over year for 19, 20, and 21. Now I know 20 we had COVID, and uh, but in 19 we were at a 40 43 percent growth. In 20 we were at a four and a half percent. At least it was positive, you know. And then in uh, uh, 21 we were at a 22 percent growth. And this year we're shooting for a a 20 percent growth. Now how sustainable is this? You know. It, it is amazing to see when, when you learn it, when you learn how much waste we have in our shops. Uh, and I could talk about this for hours, but the, the, the waste is everywhere, but we, but learning to see it is, is the, the key. And what, and, and how do you take that? What do you, how do you take that learning to see it? How did you learn to see it? Um, there's things called, um, so I'm going to talk real quick and try to make it as short as I can. Let's, let's take a spaghetti diagram. And I, I think I'd mentioned this off to you offline. I think the first time we spoke, Gavin, a couple months ago. Um, uh, and again, sorry about all your flooding. I did not, uh, I didn't know how bad it was. So I'm glad you're, uh, you're as positive as you are after going through all this. So <laughs> yeah, you but, gotta, you gotta remain upbeat. 
<laughs> yeah, you do. Yep. And uh, uh, so anyhow, back to a spaghetti guy diagram as an example. Let's just take the customer um, has their car scheduled to bring it into our shops and they, they, they bring it in and pull up out front, you know, wherever that may be. They walk into your customer service rep and they hand the keys. Hey, I'm Mrs. Jones. I'm dropping off my car. Uh, what will you do if, if you'd look down at a, at a, like a blueprint or just a simple drawing of the outline of your building looking top down, okay? Maybe where your parking lot is and so forth. And, and you, would, you would just draw, like just put a zero where that car would be. You can use a matchbox car or anything else that you want, sticky notes. You can even use sticky notes. Put a zero. And uh, now, the, now that car gets staged to a place waiting to get blueprint. I think they call it blueprint in Australia. I don't know, but anyhow. Um, so now you're gonna draw a line and you're gonna put um, uh, number one. That was the first place that that car got moved to. So now maybe it goes in and gets, gets a, a pre-wash, okay? Then it's moved into a deep detail bay. That's number two. Then it's moved back out to a staging area. That's number three. Now it's moved into the blueprint uh, bay to get taken apart. Maybe a check-in and so forth. That's number four. Uh, gets taken apart now and now it has to have parts ordered. Okay, now we got to move back outside maybe to another staging area. That's number five. And then it's finally moved back in to start into the body department. You know, and all that. You keep going through all these departments and you keep drawing uh, a one, two, three, four, five. Um, I've been told before there's there's some cars that almost need an oil change by the time they get done in our shops, you know, because they've been moved so many times. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, I could, I could, again, I could talk about this for hours, but when you get done, you look down at your, your shop and it looks like you've got a plate of spaghetti because you've got lines going all over the place. And, and it, just as an example, you know, on an on a insurance company's estimate, how many times do we get to charge for moving the car? Um, hey, we were in the build department. We found out we missed a bracket. We missed this, we missed that. Okay, now we got to pull it offline because we got to get something else we can actually produce. Um, you know, that, that's just one example of, of learning to see waste. You know, we, we have our, our clip cart in a separate, in, in our blueprint location where our blueprinting is done is where our clip cart is, you know, where any clips, push-ins, whatever we need. But we used to keep one in, in, in build and that was a huge mistake. So we had two carts we were, we were actually equipping. Well, how many times did we not get paid for clips that just got through? If you, you could be sloppy in blueprint because you knew you had a clip cart in, in build. And so we took that cart away from build. And so every time that, and it, it's a pretty good distance from build back to the, the blueprint cart. I mean, it could be 65, 60 steps. And uh, is an insurance company going to pay for those 60 steps there? Maybe they're going to talk about the ball game and so forth the night before. Now it costs more time. And now they're going to walk all the way back. Uh, how expensive was that two clips that were missed in blueprint? They're extremely expensive. Did they get now that they even get added on the us who cares about the three or four bucks on the clip you lost probably 45 dollars in time you know and and time is the absolute most expensive commodity we have in our shop and and so many don't understand that 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 cost is not numerical it's not numerical it, it's it, you know time and, and time is what's so expensive so i i can talk about this for hours so but another example and just just think about this please you take a, 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 the parts vendor, the delivery guy drops off the invoice. Okay, he hands it to somebody and he wants a signature. Um, how many times or how many hands did that invoice have to go through in order to get into the filing cabinet with the statement paid? Just follow up the spaghetti diagram of that invoice. How many hands did it have to go through? How many times did it have to be scanned or whatever? You know what I mean? And, and just think about a, a, just example of an invoice or um, even, even, uh, uh, there, there's a thing called a value stream map and I could talk about this for hours, but, um, you know, it, it's the time from when the customer hands us the keys. Uh, it's actually, it's from the time of the initial notification of loss until the money is put in the bank. How many, how many steps did we have to go through, you know, and, and, and processes do we have to go through? And what I've been told, at least when it's been tracked very closely, it's, it's nearly 9,000, you know, 9,000 steps, you know, from the time you grab the stapler, the time you push print on your printer and you, you paper comes out and you grab the estimate and you staple it, you know what I mean? The, the amount of steps that go through and the only, and I, as far as the United States, and I think it's the same as Australia, the only thing we get paid is items on the, line items on the estimate. That's all we get paid for. 
And anyhow, you can tell, Gavin, I get pretty excited about this stuff. So, <laughs> Well, that's, that's a great example. And, and I use a similar example in my book, in one of my chapters called the go-see factor, where I talk about the, the time losses there just on having a printer in a different location in the, in yep. the office. Yep. And, and using that multiplication factor there in, in relation to how much time over the course of a day over three or four people and then, right. with, and that's without the interrupt factor as well. Right. And so that your spaghetti diagram very much reminds me of my go see factor in the book mm -hmm. uh, and, right. the, and the saloon door swinging open in the office. You know, you, you're swinging those hinges off that door and you're replacing it all the time. So it's, it's about how do we manage that time? And that's a great example of it. And it's like you say, you've got to have that tear down and that blueprinting process absolutely nailed because as soon as you go into one supplement, um, all your numbers on that job are changing. Yeah. You go into two supplements and they're changing even for the worst. You go into three plus um, and it's a dead duck. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's the education factor. And if we go back to talking about the, how you had consultants that knocked on your door and how did you feel, what was your feeling and how did you manage those feelings when the consultants may have been putting things in front of you that um, didn't, that, that you had to either accept or not accept? What was that like? Because that's a challenging part for business owners. Well, I, again, I'd say back to back to the pride deal. Um, I actually, um, <clears throat> I actually got a hold of some got some references, you know, and talked to guys just like me. And and uh, you know, when they when they describe certain situations in shops that 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 a lot of shops have, it's all I almost felt like they had actually been in my shop. You know what I mean? And and I'm um, like, <clears throat> how did you know that? You know what I mean? And well, because it. They, they said the, the owner is usually the guy that, that they, they could set outside the shop with the, you know, especially if the doors were open and there was one guy that was running all over the place. Well, a lot of times that was the owner. So, <laughs> but just getting references and, and knowing that, you know, it, there, 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 there are people out there, especially like you that are able to help us. Um, and, and just knowing that I don't know it all. I don't, I, and, and you have to come at a breaking, come to, a, in my opinion, not that you have to come to a breaking point, but I was at a breaking point and I'm extremely bullheaded, extremely. And far as, uh, you know, to pay somebody to learn and all that, and even back to books and just like your book, Gavin, and so forth. Uh, when I was younger, I mean, I was, I was in high school and out of high school and so forth. I hated reading, reading books. And uh, that was a huge mistake. And again, I lost 15 to 20 years uh, just even by the, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm very content, I guess, and, and happy where I'm at in my life, but, and I don't, don't live with regret, but yet they're still with, that's why I try to, I tell people about this because I'm like, don't, don't, especially the younger guys, don't, don't do what I did. You know, you, you, you've got to be very open and now granted, there may be some things that you won't take home with you and, and maybe won't help you in your shop, but if you can get two or three things and really apply those makes a huge difference. So I, I hopefully I answered your question. Yeah, definitely. And how does your shop respond to challenges? How, as a team, like you're running a shop, it's a profitable shop, you've got your numbers, you've got your culture, you've got your team. And how do you guys re respond to uh, when you have a rework or when you get an assessor that's really just challenging you on your estimate and, and pushing all the buttons? What's that look like at Lawrence Body Shop? Well, I would say um, maybe maybe not. This won't address so much the question with an adjuster, but um, uh, you know, I, I can be a dictator if I want to, <clears throat> but it's not the good thing to do for my my shop. Um, you know, it, if we have a problem that, that arises, let's say a comeback, something comes back and there's some kind of a defect. Um, you know, we're, let's have a discussion about it. I'm not going to let's, let's don't. You know, it doesn't do any good for me to get mad. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that doesn't accomplish anything. Let's have a discussion on how can we prevent this? How can we fix the problem and prevent it from ever coming back? You know, as a team, not Greg dictating, you know, hey, this, you're screwed up, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, what, what can we do to prevent that in the future? And uh, it's working together as a team. And, and the best thing I can do is just sit in the corner and be quiet. And, uh, you know, if they, you know, maybe I can give some input, but if they can figure it out on their own, 
uh, because if I dictate it in the, or give them SOPs or work standards or whatever you guys would call them, if I hand them to them and say, do this, they're like, well, you're not doing the work. This is dumb. You know, we, we need to be the ones to figure this out. And, and that's crucial. Back to culture is to have your, uh, have your people, uh, because, of, because if I dictate to them what they should do, then who's responsible if it doesn't work? I am. Not, not them. You know, they need to be the ones making the decision. And, you know, and they all have, they, we all, and I'm including me in that, we all need to have a handshake, just like blueprinting. This is how we're going to blueprint. And if we find there's a problem in our blueprint process, and of course, like a sewer, you know, poop goes downhill and uh, it's going to show up and build more than likely when we're building that car. Uh, we, whatever we screwed up in blueprint, okay, we need to go back to blueprint. And, you know, it, it, um, work standards are the either, either when there's problems, either it's people not following good work standards or it's good people following junk work standards. It's one of the two. And uh, you want to have good work standards, of course, with good people. And back to an adjuster, um, you, you got to have really smart people. You got to have people with some intelligence, you know, and you, you've got, they've got to have some rapport. Um, they've got to have tact you know, in order to, um, like I, one of my guys, especially, um, <laughs> he's really, really good. You know, the, the time he gets off the phone, he knows where they went to college. Um, and, and I'll just throw this out that if, if, uh, for the, your bigger shops, say you know, that multi, your MSOs that have four or five shops and they know they're going to have to talk to a regional guy, uh, listen to this. I heard, I heard this from, uh, uh, a guy at our association who has 15 stores and, uh, he said he'll actually, uh, um, he'll actually, what do they call it? Um, he'll check them out on Facebook and he'll find their, their page, find out what they're interested in and different things like that. And whether it's golfing or whatever, and then he'll try to slip that in the conversation, you know, and, and then you get an affinity for each other and you may be more, more, uh, they may be more willing to pay and Hey, this guy, He's not a jerk, you know what I mean? And what we're trying to work work together here, you know, and, and you can you can probably get more on your estimate and, and like that. I used to just yell and I found out yelling doesn't do any good. <laughs> yeah, man, have, yeah, 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 I think you're gonna hit the nail on the head with that one. Yelling doesn't do any good at all. And I think there's two really important pieces of your response to that that resonate for me. The first one was you sit back and you listen. Now, listening skills are, are something that are, is just so underrated. But if people could just sit back and listen, and the second part of it was that you asked the question, how could we do this better? Right. Or what could we do differently to um, eliminate this problem or, or at the very minimal um, reduce the risk of it happening again? Because when, when you ask the right questions and when you frame it the right way, you're having your people go outside of themselves instead of looking inside as being the victim, someone's looking to blame them. So then they try to look at them, well, what's my excuse or what's my, or they go into denial. So I'm all about asking the right questions and then listening to the response and having them, even if you've got to wait, even if you've got to wait like what feels like an eternity, they'll have their own light bulb moments that then start to get the conversation rolling to then start to say, well, what if we did this? And what if we did this? And, and so then it becomes the joint solution that they have ownership of. Well, and th this took me a while, but back to learning to see or learning to see waste and, and different things like that. Don't, ever the one you know then in lean there's uh there's seven types of waste and i won't get into all those seven types but um there's actually they say there's an eighth type and the eighth one is the underutilization of our people and the, the sad part is <clears throat> and this took me a while i won't say sad part this is a good thing for me uh it, it took me a while uh because maybe i thought some there was a few of my guys that that just really weren't very smart you know what i mean or, or they, they could do their job and like that but, but some of those guys have ran circles around me with ideas I would have never thought of. And it's by working with them and helping them to see that you've raised their, 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 uh, 
their knowledge of, of seeing waste. And it, it sounds crazy, but uh, let's take an example, Gavin. I come over to your, uh, I, you come over to my shop and you see something in there. And let's just take like a dumb example. I have a hallway and there's a chair in there. For some reason or other, I had to put that chair in the hallway and, and I had to walk around it for a few days. Uh, and let's say I'm, I'm thinking of a chair or a piece of equipment or whatever, something. And I have to walk around that. And, and after a while, you become blind to that and you don't see it anymore. You come to my shop and you're like, Greg, what are you doing with this chair in the hallway? This is crazy. Well, I guess you are right. For the last how long I've been walking around this chair, and this may be a dumb example, but you know what I mean? And where um, I've been able to, um, to help my guys to make them, I won't say make them smarter, but just to make them more um, able to see. Uh, and let's take it, a, I'm going to kind of run down a bunny trail here, but this gets into, gets into dollars. Um, we get into build and, and how many shops, and, and not that we don't have a problem, but we've really, um, uh, it's, it, it's pretty low percentage of cars that get stopped and build. And when, when a car gets stopped and build, and it's usually, uh, it's, you know, rarely is it a paint defect. It's usually some kind of a part, you know, that that's usually what the problem is. Maybe something wasn't wasn't pre-fit. Now you're trying to get fitter or whatnot, but let's take an example of a part. Um, and I could go in a whole trail, bunny trail with this, and I didn't even do this in the profit series, but the cost of that one part, and it could be a $20 part, that, that the cost of getting that part, stopping your, um, stopping your, your conveyor belt, which, you know, we got a money printing machine that's printing money off of this conveyor belt. And when that conveyor belt has to stop, um, that that one twenty dollar bracket and it it's it's it, it take me a while to explain it probably cost our shop at least I know it cost my shop close to a thousand dollars it close to a thousand dollars out of my pocket that uh, by the by missing that one part so we're going to back all the way up in the system and we're going to say what could we do differently so we could have found that that one bracket and I actually did a a PowerPoint on it at a at a conference that I did a talk at. Yeah, uh, uh, and it was a, um, um, you know, mo most, I suppose cars in Australia, but you'll have the electric shutters, you know, in the front electric shutters, and it was a bracket for that, that electric shutter. And the, our, our, our fix for that was that we pre-build anything that we can in, in uh, our mirror matching process, whether that be windshield washer jugs, truck bumpers, okay. um, grills, uh, headlights, all this stuff, everything is pre-built as much as possible and uh, we, we actually, we cut in a lot of our parts. I know some guys are like, hey, that's bad news to me, but we're going to build that car down as far as we can uh, before it gets into paint. I mean, we'll cut in where we're almost doing like blend panels. And then when we're building that car, uh, we're not really, we're not saying we don't do it, but uh, on some jobs that, you know, we're building those down to where we're just building blend doors in, 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 in build, but I could talk for hours about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's, it's, it, it, look, it's fascinating. And I love to have these types of conversations and because it's the old slow down to go faster. Oh, it's so, it, we, we have so much more time before the build process to put these cars together than we do in the actual build process. Cause we're, you know, we're trying to get our, our, our throughput per day. You know, we, we want in our shop, we want three and a half cars a day. There, I'm sure there are shops that you have that have got 12 cars a day, but with our profitability and so forth, we need to produce three and a half cars a day. And that's another discussion. Uh, it's really ours. So I, you know, there may be one day I get two cars out and the next day I get um, uh, five cars out, but you know, it has to do with hours per job, but anyhow. And just going back through that um, slow down to go faster. If, if we look at a job that's got say 10 hours of remove and replace on it, mm -hmm. uh, we call it remove and replace or, remove and reassemble. Yep. And quite often the, the body shop might elect to say, well, you know, I, I need 65% of that time to fit the car up and 35% of that time to pull it apart. So that's their split ratio. And I challenge them on the fact of, well, if you can build towards a meticulous teardown and, and what you're aiming for here, which is it's not only a teardown, but it's a teardown and it's a partial rebuild at the same time. Mm -hmm. it, you should be aiming towards a 50-50 split on that. Right. Because right. You, there's no reason you, that you can't achieve that. And if you've got your, your meticulous, your blueprinting and your teardown and your um, partial rebuild happening, 
that's going to, at the end of the day, when that job's being rebuilt or reassembled, that's just going to go to, that's got, it's going to flow and go. That's probably a catchphrase we could use. Let's make it flow and go. Yeah. Well, and, and we've all been there. I've been there. I mean, I still once in a while get on the floor and help the guys. Um, uh, but in the build process, when, when you come in in the morning and you've got to put a complete side together on a car, I mean, everything, the headliner has got to go back in and, and you got to build doors and put bumpers and everything back on. You're like, wow, you know, I'm not real excited about going into work today. You know what I mean? And, and then, then you get 90% done and you go to put it on and here you don't have the, the bumper defender uh, bracket. You know, you're missing that, you know, you, you've done all this work and, and you're missing that $20 part, you know, and, and um, it, it, anyhow, it, it, and back to culture and, and, and Gavin, I'll, I'll say real quick, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make a little uh, example here. Um, uh, I'm, you want to, I want you to come over to my house and uh, help me build a deck. And uh, I made this story up myself, but anyhow, I'm not real creative, but anyhow, I, that's the best example I can give. Uh, and you're going to come over and we're going to bring a couple other buddies over here and, and, and that uh, we know each other. We've, we've had fun together and, but Hey, we're, we're going to work together as a team and build, build a deck at my house. So you guys, okay, we're going to do this coming Saturday. All right, great. I've told my wife, you know, you, everybody's told their wife, Hey, they're going to be busy. And uh, they're going over to Greg's house to build a deck. So you get over to my house and uh, we got two different scenarios. We get there and it's going to be hot. Hey, it's going to be maybe 90 degrees. I don't know what it is in Celsius in Australia, but anyhow, um, it's going to be hot. And uh, by God, we've, we've got plans. We've got our plans made up. I've got all the, the right lumber I need. I've got all the right fasteners. I've got all the right tools. And we get to noon and hey, we're, we're moving along. I mean, we're, it's, it's warmed up pretty good and we're pretty hot. But uh, that's okay. And, and uh, man, we're, we're going to bust through and we're going to see if we can get this thing done. And by golly, it gets to five o'clock and, and, uh, and we got the thing, maybe six o'clock. We had to work a little extra, but by golly, at six o'clock, we got the thing done. We're all tired, but we look, stand back and look back. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, all four of us worked together and we got that deck built and man, does it look, look good. And, uh, uh, you know, we, and we had fun working together. Even though we worked hard, we definitely got good stuff accomplished. And the different scenario is you come come over to my place and, and maybe I'm just now gathering up tools and we had to make three trips to the, the I don't know what they, Home Depot is what we got in the United States. I don't know what they got yeah. in uh, Australia, Bunnings. but uh, we had to make, what do you say? Bunnings Warehouse. Okay. But, but we had to make three trips to, to Bunnings Warehouse and um and, and, uh, oh shoot, now I'm, I'm missing a drill bit. You know, I'm missing this, missing that. Well, then we get to about noon and we figure out three of the poles are in the wrong spot. You know, now we have to pull them up and redrill them and put them in a different spot. And we get to, we get to the end of the day and, and say it's six o'clock now. And we look back and we're halfway done. You have plans the next Saturday. Everybody's got plans, but me, I know for the next three Saturdays, I'm going to have to spend work on this deck. And, and maybe we got a little frustrated and worked up with each other. And we go home and, and uh, do we have a sense of accomplishment and, and, and uh, pride? Yeah, not really. Not really. And that's the difference. That's the difference on how far as blueprinting cars and, and again, working together as a team, mirror matching parts. And that's, we, 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 even though it can be, can be fairly hard work. Again, hard work's not sustainable. You know what I'm talking about, but you know, we're going to stay steady on a job, but um uh, we, we want to make sure we have everything we have to do the job correctly. And uh, it's, it's just, I can't emphasize this enough. It's interesting that you use that analogy like a, a, a builder. Um, and I'm sure that there's some builders out there that have exactly that scenario that uh, plays out for them. And then there's the builder there that gets the, the deck built. <laughs> he, does, he, he, he gets in, gets it done. He knows what he's doing, you know, and, and again, has a team that's no, that knows what they're doing. So, yes. Yeah, awesome. Hey, Greg, I won't keep you too much longer. Now, if you could just share with us, what's your profitability looking like for, for this year? And what's, what's your turnover looking like? Just to give some of our, our listeners an idea on, on the, the volume of your shop and, and what you shoot for. Uh, sure. We're, we're shooting for 3.8 million is where we're at this year. Uh, I've had a lot of opportunities at, at other shops. I just had another opportunity at a second shop had an opportunity about four shops, but honestly, I'm, um, I'm having a lot of fun. And, uh, when, 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 when you're making good money and so forth, 
uh, there's times my wife says, but why, you know, <laughs> why, do, why do you want to, why do you want to get another SOP? So I may do it at some point, but um, anyhow, we had, uh, and, you know, net profit is kind of a fickle number, you know, whether you yeah. ha have tr trucks and cars and, you that know, I, be I manipulated. One, yeah. yeah, yeah, I heard one guy that was building a cabin in the woods. And the, and the guy who was building it was on the payroll, you know, and, but yeah. I, I run a, run a pr pretty clean ship and uh, we were at 18 and a half percent in the last year is where we were at. And uh, uh, this year I'm, I'm shooting for 20 and we could talk about this quite a while, Gavin, but uh, getting past your break even, you've got to get past your break even as early as you can in the month. And when you get past your break even, your expenses are taken out of the equation. So mm -hmm. uh, the insurer finds a used hood. And it's going to cost you another 150 bucks uh, or $200 to have a, a new hood here the next day versus three or four days with a used hood that needs about three or four hours of work. You know, what's the right thing to do? Now, if your cycle time is too long, you can go out of business with, with buying the new hood on every job. But, um, but if you're past your break even, you know, you, you, can, you can fix those cars. I won't say at a discount. You can fix those cars with a little bit more expense because you've taken out, uh, you know, probably 30% of your costs, which was your overhead that was already taken out in the middle of the month or so, you know, but um, anyhow, our, our uh, as far as turnover, I don't know where Wood's at, but I need to knock on Wood. So anyhow, uh, I got a door back there I could knock on, but uh, uh, we've, I've actually had a couple boomerang guys that left and then come back. So we haven't had anybody um, leave uh, on their own let's put it that way yeah <laughs> we haven't had anybody leave on their own um since i think 2017 i would say uh yeah maybe 16 2016 so i've got the uh, we we give three weeks vacation after five years and if we can hit our goal and that's the, that we're currently on right now uh we'll get four weeks vacation for guys with 10 years and, and above so i'll have one guy that would uh, be eligible this year and then uh, two more guys that are eligible at the end of this year so I got a fairly young team but I'm the oldest in my shop so I'll be 55 next, next month and I've got one 50 year old and the rest of them are like 40 and below oh awesome well it sounds like look you've you've undergone a, a really interesting journey and I've had a similar journey in my life as well coming as a body shop owner and then working my way into consultancy and then into software and mm -hmm. and I love doing what I do what I do. And it was interesting that the first time that we spoke that you said to me, hey, I've got something of yours here. And I said, what would that be? And you you held up a copy of my book. Um, so yeah, it was pretty interesting uh, how that conversation went on. And and so if you got a chance to read the book, how did it resonate with you? How did you find it? Uh, it was, it was great. It's actually been, it wasn't, it's been two months since I read it, Gavin. So <laughs> I read it right after we talked then, but uh, uh, again, back to, and I just, I, I, I'll, I'll back up for, I'll, I'll answer your question in a second. So through the Facebook thing and like that, I've, I've had a couple, probably four or five guys that I've, I've been working with and um, you know, I'm not after, after making money off of these guys and haven't charged anybody a dime and i'm not saying I, I won't at some point but um you know my time is valuable but i i, I whenever you give whenever you give uh, uh whenever you give back to back it always returns to you it always does and, and it may not be in the financially you know it it, it always turns back and, and helping others is one of the greatest satisfactions that i've ever found you know it's so much fun and especially for something that i'm so passionate for i mean again i i kind of explained that but i i love this business you, you have all these negative people out there and the people that, you know, you can't make money and, uh, you know, uh, DRPs and all, all these other things and all that stuff. Best thing for those people is just quit and get out of business. That'd be the best thing. And uh, because all they want to do is, is complain. But um, so the, the shops that I've been working with, um, they've sent me the profit and loss statements. And, you know, it's, it's all confidential and so forth, but it's, I am floored. I'm just absolutely floored. And there's one guy that that's doing, you know, several million dollars and his net profit is 1%. I mean, about, about, as it sounds crazy, about makes me tear up. You know, they've, they've had this shop for a long time and you're, they're not going to make it. They're not going to make it. And so I'm trying to help them guys. You know, you've got, you've got to know your numbers. You've got to. And uh, so I guess that was kind of the main thing that, that I had gotten. There was some other, 
I, I, I wish I should have read through it ahead of time, but there were some, you had some very, very good quotes in there. And I, I wish, so I'll, I'll shoot them an email to you. <laughs> but some really, yeah. some really good quotes. And, uh, <laughs> but, um, but again, um, just back to, you know, the title of your book, as far as know your numbers. And I'm actually even going through another book right now. It's uh, simple, if you can't see it, simple numbers. And uh, there was some very interesting calculations that this guy had. And maybe we could talk about that on another meeting or something. But yeah, anyhow, sure. Uh, yeah. So everybody that's, that's listening, I, I can't emphasize enough. Um, read, read, read. Listen to as much stuff as you can. Uh, read Gavin's book 100%. Um, and, and I just, the, the numbers is what just made the total difference for me. And, but, and, you know, there's KPIs. We understand there's KPIs and like that. But, but knowing your break even is extremely important. Um, you know, as far as my paint materials profitability, I know what it is, um, but is that crucial to my success? It's a factor to my success, but getting, getting a, one more car out a week at a 45% GP, if the average uh, severity is four grand is $1,800. And can I buy a, a new hood and eat $200? Now I walk away with $1,600 at the end of the week. Was that a smart decision? Of course it was a smart decision. You know, and, and sixteen hundred dollars just went right directly to the bottom line, and and yeah. so many don't understand that they they they're looking at the cost. They'll they'll they will um um uh, what I want to say they they will do the uh they're gonna, when they're tracking the cost per job. What I want to what's the term for that, Gavin? Um, well, job it, costing. It job, job job costing. Yes. When when they job cost. That can be an Achilles heel. That that can sh you can shoot yourself in the foot if you focus on that too much. You want to have you want to have a you want to have a um, your hand on the dial, but uh, don't let that drive one more car getting out a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, look, it's it's been fascinating talking to you, Greg, and um, we'll wind it up uh, just by one, just thanking you for taking the time today. It's, it's your evening now, so you can head off head off home and it's our morning over here and and i'm on leave this week so i'm going to take myself down the beach and take my son for a bit of a swim and and, and enjoy this extended easter that's what i've got but you talk about reading and and i'm always reading and listening to audio books and stuff and i'm reading a book at the moment just called your exceptional life mm -hmm. by a local author uh and i was listening to audio books on the trip down on the on the way down i was listening to a just a great read by Bob Proctor, who is a, a, oh, wow. a self self help guy. Um, mm -hmm. he, he's a pretty cool guy. He's uh, I really like Bob Proctor. He's um, I'll just turn this phone off. I should have done that. But um, uh, yeah, listen, read, gather well, knowledge, uh, get help. Put your hand up. Um, you don't have to agree with everything that everyone says, but you, you can if you can take those little one percenters out of it and go back and apply it in some way. We will be talking about your improved profitability. And that's what today's conversation was about is saying that, hey, profits are out there. You've just got to be focused on it and you've got to start to know your numbers is the first part of the learning. And then apply the systems around that to improve the numbers. Yes. I'd so, love, great. Love thank you. Back. It's yep. been awesome. Uh, we'll let you go, and maybe we might be able to hook up. I'll get this out there, and we'll get some feedback from some of our um, people that will watch this on our YouTube channel, and others will read it as a, a blog. And thank you for giving us the permission to share your profit series that you did with Dave Lua as well. Yep, do, do with it whatever you want. Okay. Thanks for, thanks for talking to us, Greg, and we'll catch you next time on Planning Plus Software and Auto Body Shop Consultants. Thanks, Gavin. Take care. Bye-bye.